Seth was like, you're not being yourself. You're so, cause I'm normally like upbeat and happy and blah, 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 and whatever. And I was just like droning. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting that also can often tie into, um, thyroid hormone dips really? in mood, a little dips in low mood. And it's really common, um, for moms or, you know, especially when pregnant, it, it naturally almost encourages like hypothyroidism. Mm. And it's, it sounds crazy, but it's, it's really common in the lab work to see it gravitate towards hypothyroidism and then it can shift out of it after pregnancy. Hey guys, my name is Shayla. Welcome to the Hey Shayla podcast. I went from full-time travel to full-time new COVID mom and holy Wow, is motherhood and adulting a learning curve? There are so many decisions we need to make and a million ways to do it right. I created this podcast to interview some of my gurus to share their knowledge and empower you on your journey. Let me be your guinea pig and ask the questions that you think everyone else knows. Here, we're a little hippie. We try to do things as naturally as possible and we don't take ourselves too seriously. But above all, we support one another and work to find what works. If you're into it, you're our people. Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome to the Hey Chilla podcast. Thank you for listening. If you are not subscribed yet, please subscribe. That helps me out a lot. This week, we are talking with a clinical nutritionist that I actually am personally working with. I've been working with since October. It is now December and I love working with her. I love it. And I wanted to record this because I think a lot of you will resonate with what she does. So she's equal parts, nerdy, scientific. She likes to use data. And I say all that with love. I think nerdy is a compliment (laughs) and equal parts, natural, holistic granola. So basically the difference between a clinical nutritionist and a nutritionist is a clinical nutritionist will do the data. So she will look at the blood and then recommend herbs, supplements, minerals, vitamins. Cause when I first started working with her, I was like, okay, clinical nutritionist, what does that mean? And that's how she explained it. You have a 15 minute intro call where you just tell her everything that's going on. And I'm glad I didn't record mine because I was like, I don't know. Nothing's really going on. I'm just curious about what's going on in my body. (laughs) Many years ago, I did a food sensitivity test just because I was curious if there's anything that my body didn't like. I didn't really have any symptoms or anything. So that's kind of how I started this conversation. And then once we dove into it a little bit, I was like, oh, I guess I do have a little bit of trouble with like, what did I write? I have mood because in my first trimester of this pregnancy, And even postpartum, I was not okay. And my midwife this time was like, if you need to go on medication, that's okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with going on medication if that's what I need, but I'm crying myself to sleep one night. And for the next four days, I feel great. So at what point do you go on meditate, meditation, medication, when you're crying yourself to sleep all the days, or am I, can I go on now? I had that. I have major concentration. And for me, I'm like, this is a benefit. I can like do a hundred things at once. And Seth is like, but you don't complete any of them. I'm like, okay, Seth, whatever energy is low. And I just attributed that to my first trimester and having a toddler. And I'm sure all of that's true as well. And we have thyroid stuff in my family. So I always occasionally will go get my thyroid tested and it's perpetually low. So just trying to like, see if that's still an issue and that changes in pregnancy too. But so basically what I'm saying is a lot of stuff came up that I was like, oh, and stress response. (laughs) I don't feel like I'm typically a stressed out person, but when something goes wrong, I go from zero to 100 and I'm just like the whole, the sky is falling. Like what's happening to me. And then it's over very quickly. So I'll call Seth in that moment, which I need to probably not do. I'd be like, Leah didn't nap today and I can't get anything done. And I just am tired. My whole, and I'll call back like 10 minutes later. He'll be like, Hey, I just can't. I'm sorry. You're having such a hard day. I'm like, Oh yeah, I feel fine now. (laughs) Everything's fine. So like my stress response is gnarly anyway. So we do the 15 minute call. I kind of tell her the things that are going on. She decides what labs I need. So we do blood. Then we do an hour and a half call talking about my blood. 
well, we talk about the history. And so we go over even more depth of stuff that's going on. She looks at my blood. She kind of tells me, okay, this is high. This is low. This is what we would do. And then we go into the treatment and it's all based on natural herbs and supplements and vitamins and just replenishing the body to make you feel good. So I've found working with her that my mood has picked up exponentially. And there's a lot of stuff she can't really do with me right now because I'm pregnant, but like the minor things that she can do, I have noticed a difference and it's been awesome. I just wanted to share her with you and this recording with you so that you could see what a clinical nutritionist does and what Stephanie does. And if you're feeling any of these things and you're like, oh, I wish that I had somebody that I could work with that I could get some help from. That's why I'm doing this for you. She's amazing. Cause I know that a lot of you are like me and we're naturally minded and it's an investment. It's an investment in your health, which to me is gives back tenfold. So let's get into it. I am not playing the whole hour and a half. Cause honestly, it's just a lot of my history, but I kept the stuff in there. That was super interesting. Yeah. Let's just get into it. I want to start this podcast with Stephanie, just telling us who you are, what you do. Tell me, tell me everything. Yeah. So hello, everybody. My name is Stephanie Cuny and I'm a clinical nutritionist. So what I do, this is a little different than, you know, maybe going to see your general medical doctor or getting a checkup, but we work on your health and wellness, but we look to optimize you naturally. So, you know, I still run labs just like you would if you're going for a checkup. Typically, if you go to a medical doctor, it's like, hey, is this bolded or out of range on a lab? And unless it is, really nothing is acknowledged and, you know, nothing's wrong with you. Yeah. So my perspective and, you know, what, what we try to do is capture what's called a functional range. So this is a tighter range and we look at this as the optimal health range, meaning, you know, you may have certain symptoms, um, certain issues going on, and they're hard to identify if you go, you know, towards modern medicine, but our goal is to filter that through a functional range. So we look at a much tighter range to see, hey, what's going on for you. Um, And then also some more specialized labs like vitamin mineral deficiencies, certain hormone levels, inflammatory levels. Sure, your lab can be out of range, but the symptoms matter so much as well. So we're always looking to kind of like marry the both together to get you feeling better, but then get to the root cause. And we do that through looking at the labs to replete or fill any deficiencies uh, that we might find. So cool. And that's what I love. Okay. How can we do this to make your body function the best way? And not just, Oh, here's your symptom. Let's treat that. But like, what is causing this symptom? Let's treat that. And I think that I just resonate with that so much. Um, clinical nutritionist, that means that you can run the labs or what, how is that different than a nutritionist? Yeah. So, okay. So commonly, like if you see a nutritionist, typically you're going to do, you know, some type of diet planning, maybe they'll coach you on macronutrients. Uh, They might take a look at what you're eating and focus more so on food with clinical nutrition. Our, our goal is to what we call upregulate your physiology, but naturally, So if you come in with low mood or anxiety, sure, certain diet changes can help, but most of the patients that see me, they're not necessarily eating like complete crap. You know, they're already kind of making some changes on their own or cutting out certain foods. So what we do is we look to replete deficiencies using therapeutic doses of vitamins, minerals, nutrients, herbs, then with diet lifestyle kind of combined. So cool. And I love following you on Instagram too, because you just show like all these random, you're like, here's a really great, I don't know, box food thing that is actually pretty healthy if you need it occasionally for a quick meal. And I'm like, okay, that's awesome. So constantly giving out all this like awesome advice or just information really. Thank you. That's so cool. And you're living in Hawaii. Can we just talk about that for a second? (laughs) I know (laughs) that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. That was really crazy how it happened with COVID. Um, so my husband's a chiropractor, I'm a nutritionist and we both were practicing in person. And with COVID, we ended up just going virtual a hundred percent getting to the point where like, okay, we could really see this working virtually. And, um, then he decided to close his practice 
And then we're like, okay, if we could wear the magic <laughs> wand and just like live anywhere, where sure. would this be? Um, in our journey, we're getting ready to start a family. So we're kind of in the space of like, hey, we don't have kids that we need to worry about being in yeah. school at this point. Like, what are we totally. going to do? And we were like, we both like Hawaii. So oh my God. <laughs> let's give that a go. <laughs> I am obsessed with that. So what island are you on? We're on Oahu. Love. Yeah. Oh, yes. that's so incredible. And like the fresh food and everything there is, ah, oh, that's amazing. It's definitely an adventure. Um, after work every day where we're just like, Hey, what beach are we going to go to? Yeah. Are we going to yeah. we going to bodyboard? Are we going <laughs> to see a sea turtle today? Gosh, so good. I love that so, so much. Okay. So let's get into it. So I kind of shared this with you before we started. I'm definitely somebody who's just like, I just want to know what's going on in my body. Cause I, when we first started chatting, I was like, I don't know. I don't really have any symptoms. And then we dug a little bit deeper and I was like, oh, I guess I do have some symptoms of things that might need to be worked on. When I was living in Puerto Rico, I was living with a naturopath doctor and we just ran a food sensitivity test on me. And my family was like, what's going on, Shay? Do you have like stomach problems? And I was like, nope, literally just curious to see if there's anything that my body doesn't like. And it turns out that dairy was like all in the red. And I was like, that's weird. But I was like, you know what? If it, if my blood's saying it's all in the red, I'm just going to give it a go. We'll see what happens here. So I cut out dairy and I was a different human. Like I was just functioning this like fog lifted. I lost a lot of just like, I don't know, inflammation. It was just like a lot of puff on my body that I was fine with before, but I was like, Oh, okay. So I leaned out a bit, had no brain fog, but then once you do that and your body's like, hell yeah, we're cruising. We're like li living well. And then you eat a bowl of ice cream. It's like, we don't do this anymore. We do not do this. And so that's where I'm at. And, and like Seth has now become dairy free just as a byproduct because I just have all dairy free stuff in. And I think it's just really powerful to just see because you function at a level sometimes that you think is normal and that feels fine. And then you take out that thing that your body doesn't like, and then you feel like, it, like it's just another level of living. That's right. That's right. Okay. So first we're going to start with your history. Okay. And then from there, we'll move into the lab. So go through that from the functional perspective. And then at the end, we'll put together the protocol, kind of cover like any uh, vitamin recommendations, supplements, herbs, diet, lifestyle, and, and such. Sweet. Okay. So to start first primary concerns in order of importance, huge one thyroid. I am perpetually cold. Like I am freezing or like my body can't regulate its temperature. We'll be on a hot, like on a walk in at 75 degrees. And I'm like crappy because I'm hot and I am grumpy. And Seth is like, chill out. It's only 75 degrees. It's not that bad. I'm like, I'm sweating or I'm freezing in the house and it's, it is 70 degrees in the house. And I'm like bundling up in sweaters and stuff. And my hands are always cold. And that's definitely something. Okay. So tell me with the concentration, tell me a little bit more about that. You know, with your first pregnancy, did that kind of like baby brain, mom brain, did it alleviate a little bit after, you know, after a little time went by or, and it restart, you know, you're noticing it intensify currently. Yeah. Or has it kind of just been there low grade and it turns it, up at some time? I would say it, it was there for a while postpartum, maybe like nine or 12 months postpartum. Then I could kind of have a little bit of space to think. Great. Okay, great. So now we're going to move into a different part of the questionnaire. So I'm just going to ask you some questions and kind of tell me either mild, moderate, severe, or uh, I might ask you to elaborate on something as well. Okay. So would you say that you're slow to start in the morning? No. Oh. So you wake up and you're pretty, um, pretty yeah. good to go. You feel well energized. Yeah. As soon as my feet hit the ground, I'm like doing a thousand things. So how many hours? Um, I normally am somebody that can get like six or seven hours and be like, fine. But I did that a couple of nights recently. And I, I, I like, the, on day two, I was not okay. I was like emotional. I was exhausted. I didn't feel well. And Seth was like, well, you went to bed kind of late. And I was like, yeah, but I got seven hours of sleep. And then literally I had this epiphany, which is not an epiphany. I was like, oh, I'm growing a human. I probably need more sleep than not growing a human. Shayla does. So I started giving myself a 10 o'clock bedtime. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then okay. uh, Aaliyah still wakes up quite frequently, but we go sleep. So it's pretty, usually pretty short. She kind of fusses. She goes back to sleep. I go back to sleep. It's not, doesn't, I don't think it bothers me that much. <laughs> okay. So pretty much you don't really have much difficulty falling asleep naturally you don't have difficulty staying asleep it's just you might wake up if Leah wakes up yep how about low mood do you experience and even kind of before pregnancy any dips of low mood um definitely with the pregnancy I did before that no because it was a it was kind of a foreign feeling when I started to feel low and it was postpartum um and I would just like again I thought it was I, I think it's hormones but I would just Seth was like, you're not being yourself. You're so, cause I'm normally like upbeat and happy and blah, 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 and whatever. And I was just like droning. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting. That also can often tie into, um, thyroid hormone dips really? in mood, a little dips in low mood. And it's really common, um, for moms or, you know, especially when pregnant, it, it naturally almost encourages like hypothyroidism. And it's, it sounds crazy, but it's, it's really common in the lab work to see it gravitate towards hypothyroidism and then it can shift out of it after pregnancy. Um, so, so you, so you're saying that you kind of never experienced low mood, but after postpartum, you would notice you would, you would dip into it and, um, kind of experience it more than how about currently during this pregnancy, are you having, um, any dips occasionally? Yeah. Okay. Do you do any exercise? Normally, yes. During this first trimester, no, but I'm going to start getting into it now that I'm kind of feeling better. What were you doing prior to it? I have a program called Expecting and Empowered and it's postpartum and pregnancy workouts, but it's a lot of like um, weightlifting, resistance bands type things. I also love yoga. Like that is my happy place. All right, we're going to take a brief break to talk about Expecting and Empowered. Expecting and Empowered is a pregnancy and postpartum workout guide, and I recommend this to everybody that's pregnant or postpartum. It's like the one thing that people are like, are you going to do that for your next pregnancy? 1,000%. I was still doing these workouts like a year and a half postpartum, and it does it only goes to 33 weeks. Anyway, the pregnancy workouts prepare you for labor, and the postpartum workouts repair you from labor. It has stretching pelvic floor exercises, and the actual work. And what I love about it is it's created by a nurse and a physical therapist so you know that the workouts that you're doing are safe. And sometimes when you're pregnant, you're just not sure. Now you know. So I'm an affiliate with them. You can use my code, Hey Shayla. It will get you $10 off the guides. They also just came out with a labor and delivery course. It's brand new, super exciting. If you have any questions about it, please DM me on Instagram, Hey Shayla. All right, let's get back to it. How about craving sweets? Does, is that true for you? Like gravitate towards sugar, candy? No. What, what about carbs, bread, chips, anything uh, like that? Kind of. When I eat them a lot, I tend to feel like I ate them a lot and I try and stay away from it. Like I can feel it. I don't know when I eat a lot of them. Okay. Like you don't feel your best afterwards. You can feel off in your body. And that's kind of how I, that's kind of how I eat. I eat to feel. So if I eat something that like a bowl of pasta does not sound appealing because I know that I'm just going to feel like poop afterwards. (laughs) Like I'm just going to feel bogged down and heavy. I used to say that if I can't do a handstand after I eat a meal, then I don't want to eat it. I want to be able to still feel light and energetic and food that makes me feel like that afterwards. All right. How many times a day do you eat animal protein? When I'm pregnant more. So I don't know why, but I typically stay away from most of it. I mean, I like eating fish, occasionally chicken, but I don't eat a lot of red meat. When I'm pregnant, I want a burger. I want a steak. I want that. Okay. How many bowel movements do you have per day? Okay. Recently, like zero. It, I, <laughs> it's definitely a pregnancy symptom because this has changed, but I normally I would say I'm maybe every other day. I looked up what to do for pregnancy constipation. And it was like, make sure you're going when you have the urge. And I was like, I'm not supposed to wait till nap time. Okay. Yeah. I'll make some recommendations for you for that. Okay. Okay. So before we move into the lab, is there anything else um, that I need to know or anything else we didn't cover? So I don't really know exactly what this means, but I, I have a positive ANA. Oh, you do. Okay. Yes. So because of that, they're putting me on a, this um, baby aspirin. Cause I guess it can affect 
the placenta getting enough blood or there can be a blood clot or something. So now I'm a high risk pregnancy. Okay. Yeah. The way we look at positive ANA is it's the like preliminary screening for autoimmune disease. Okay. So, you know, there's a ton of autoimmunities. It sounds like you had a very faint positive. Yeah. But if you have one, then usually what happens after that is people run like a more thorough autoimmune panel to discover which autoimmunity it is that you have. Hmm, okay. Having a positive ANA does say at some layer or level, you likely may have a low grade autoimmune condition, but we have to figure out what that is. But if you are taking care of yourself, you often can shut off the gene expressions that would make hmm. you express symptoms of it. Interesting. Yeah. So you probably don't manifest symptoms the way someone with like a raging autoimmunity would. Yeah. You can almost put it in remission. It's not that it's not there, but right. you don't express, you know, a single symptom of it. Wild. Okay. So I'm going to pull your lab up now. Okay. I'm going to pop in real quick that this, like I said, is an hour and a half long phone call. So I cut out a lot because it's just a lot of stuff about me. And so that first bit that we just listened to was all the history questions that we go into create, like she goes crazy in depth with. Next, we're going to look at the labs and the labs show the clinical range. She's looking at a much tighter functional range. So it might say normal on the lab, but she's like, yeah, it's normal, but it's pretty low. And my range is a lot tighter so that we can catch things before it's like you have some severe symptoms. Again, I did not include all of what was in here. I just include the bits that I found fascinating. Let's get to the left. So you see here, this is TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. And what, uh, what this tells us is, you know, kind of the, the first marker you're going to look at for hypothyroidism. See, your, your presentation is very interesting, Shayla. This is what I would call secondary hypothyroidism. Your TSH is very low. It tells us there's a bit of what's called a signaling issue. So the pituitary signals to the thyroid to make hormone and move it about the body. When it's low, this low, typically the pituitary is a bit sluggish in signaling to the thyroid to make hormone. Okay. So with you, it would we would not treat you with thyroid hormone. That would probably ramp you up, make you anxious, not feel very well. Hmm. But for you, we typically treat with pituitary support because it's more of the root cause for you. So now we're kind of looking at immune system here. So okay. white blood cells are functionally a little low. But when I come down and look at some of the other immune markers, like, um, hey, is she having like chronic viral stress? Is there any bacterial stress? Is there any um, allergy response? I don't see that. So your immune system doesn't look like it's currently under some type of acute um, burden, but this does tell me that there's some type of like, I would suspect you're under chronic stress. Do I think this is detrimental for you? No. Um, I do see some things that I'm going to recommend to do to help you get out of this. But then additionally, when you're postpartum, there's even more I would recommend to do as well. Like we need to get your adrenals and your stress response um, supported because it helps with the way you handle stress physically on a cellular level. So we're going to get into protein in your kidneys right now. But in your case, though, I believe this is dealing with inadequate protein intake. Okay. And the thing is all the numbers that correlate with you metabolizing protein are very low. And I think this has been going on for a little while for you. It's okay. probably gotten a bit more severe because of the demand on the body currently. The first step is like total protein. So I look at your blood to see your total proteins. So for you, it just tells me, you know, this girl's not eating enough protein. Wild. Because all, yeah. All those numbers that are oriented around that look to be, um, trending pretty low, almost lab level low. Carbon dioxide is a bit on the lower side. This is how well you basically, how good of a breather are you? <laughs> how well you can oxygenate your blood via breathing air. Hmm. So this tells me like, you probably need to do a little bit of um, either if it's five minutes in the morning where you like meditate or breathe with a bubble and really, you know, they have those apps yeah. where you just take some deep breaths in because you're, you need some more oxygen right now in this in a cellular level in your blood. Hmm. Do you tend to avoid carbs at all? I'm not like a big dieter. I literally just kind of eat what feels good. So I'm not, I'm not somebody who's like, Oh, I'm going on a carb free thing, but I just know that it makes yeah. me feel full and sluggy. So I don't do it a lot. So typically what happens is for energy, your body is going to first pull from um, carbohydrate stores 
that's going to come from either fruit, sugar, or, you know, breads or, or, you know, grains, essentially, you may need to do with like diet wise, make a bit more of a conscious effort, especially when pregnant to get more healthy starchy carbs in throughout the day. And what kind of like, like potatoes? Yeah. Yeah. Like root vegetables, carrots, beets, butternut squash, spaghetti squash, sweet potato. I usually am not like always to recommend white potatoes, but in your case, I don't see a ton of discrepancy with that because you don't have any, you know, cardiovascular issues. You can benefit from actually some carbs. Looks like your system needs that fuel. Okay. My nerd is totally showing, but how fascinating is some of that stuff? Like, hi, your thyroid's low, but we're not going to treat the thyroid. We're going to treat the pituitary gland because the pituitary signals to the thyroid. And that's what I'm seeing more in your labs. And she, she gets to this later on. I think I actually maybe cut it out, but I started to feel like I was taking a lot of supplements. I was like, okay, I've got my prenatal, my DHA, my baby aspirin that I have to take my, what the couple of things that she's recommending. And I was just like, I feel like I'm taking a lot. And she's like, okay, cool. Well, instead of this for supporting your pituitary gland, you can eat six Brazil nuts. What? She's like, yeah, that gives you a therapeutic dose of the selenium that you need. I felt great about that. Like, so I'm going to take Brazil nuts to support my pituitary gland. That's going to support my thyroid done. <laughs> and she also was looking at it and being like, okay, so based on your blood, your body responds better to weightlifting instead of cardio. Cardio is actually going to make you weaker. What? This episode's not going to be for everybody. Some people are going to be like, Shayla, why are you sharing your entire history of everything? And other people are going to be like, I need to talk to Stephanie. She's also a great follow on Instagram. She is constantly giving information and advice to just live a healthier lifestyle. Ooh, wow. Nutrition is Stephanie on Instagram. It's all in the show notes. Now we're going to wrap it up with Stephanie. So that's really everything that we see, you know, with your labs or history, um, oh, cool. all of that stuff. Yeah. I know it's so much info we go over, but for the lab, do you have any questions or? No, I'm, I'm so excited. I, yeah, I'm just curious to see how differently I'll feel, I guess. And I'm excited about it. If somebody wants to work with you, what do they do? I saw that there's a 15, I mean, we did the 15 minute free consultation where somebody could just come and say, Hey, this is everything that I've got going on. And you can go, great. I can help you. This is what we do. So kind of what's the process for working with you? Yeah. So, um, for anyone who wants to work together, what we do is we have you to schedule that intro call. So that's either on the link in my bio and Instagram. It's also on our website. Ooh, wow. Nutrition.com. O O H. I said, Oh, wow. So you would schedule the intro call and then we would chat first. You would tell me a bit about what's going on for you. And then I would give you my perspective on your case, uh, which labs we would run. And then I'll make a recommendation. Um, either, you know, you run the labs through us or we'll send you a list of labs to request from your primary care. There, we just get the labs ran and bring you in and do your virtual visits um, and get you set up on your program. Amazing. And I saw that you can use HSA right? Oh yeah, that is right. We take HSA and FSA as well. Awesome. I feel like I just, I mean, the typical going over the labs and doing what we just did is an hour and a half call, right? Yeah. That's yeah. not something that you get with your doctor. And it's, I just, like you said, in this, you're like, so I'm helping you with all this, but I feel like we're becoming friends now because you get so much information that typically you're at your doctor's office and then you leave and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even tell them about my positive ANA or like the big things that you need that come out in the conversations that you have. So that's what I, there's so much that I love working with you with like long conversations of like going through and explaining everything in detail and like figuring out what's going on. And then just the natural component of cool, you're breastfeeding. Awesome. Oh, you're pregnant. We're going to do these things. We're not going to do these things, but all of it is all of it's natural. <laughs> all of it's, I'm getting amped. I can't even talk. Yeah. <laughs> but I like, yes, 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 yes. And so, uh, like I said, I'm just super grateful that we're working together and that hopefully people that are watching this can work with you too, that resonate with all of that. Yeah. My pleasure, Shayla. And thank you so much. Cause it's been so like, so enjoyable to do this with you and your personality. You're very easy to just warm up to. <laughs> And get going with so quickly and it's been a wonderful experience for me as well thank you guys so much for listening if you love this episode please subscribe to the podcast connect with me on instagram everything is hey shayla instagram youtube facebook 
my podcast. It's all Hey Shayla. And then Ooh Wow Nutrition is Stephanie on Instagram. It's all in the show notes. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you enjoyed it, please share with somebody you think would love. And I would be so honored if you would subscribe to the podcast and leave a comment and rating below so I can know what you guys are digging, what you want more of, just connect with you a little better. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next time.